Hi, welcome to the Yoga Lawyer Show, our first official episode. Not the pilot. <laughs> no, we did like a sort of pilot episode last week. Maybe you fun. checked it out. It was fun. But we're now exploring more of this new format, the Yoga Lawyer Show. So we had said in the pilot episode, if you saw it, that we were going to talk about politicians, non-governmental type people running for office and that type of issue today. But we actually decided to talk about something else. And we'll probably talk about that another time if that's something you're interested in. Um, but we're going to talk about the government shutdown because that was sort of pressing news that happened in the last week. And so Katie did a little research on I did. I love what research. exactly is a government shutdown and what does that mean? So yeah, because what can like, you tell us about uh, it? it Government, like, what does that mean? Government shutdown. Yeah, and we I mean, don't really understand how much the government's infused in our day to day lives. Like, so what does it mean that the government shuts down? Does that mean just everybody that works for the government doesn't go to work? I mean, it didn't happen. Like, if y'all didn't, well, it did happen. It happened for a couple days. It did right? for three days. Yeah, and and now we've got a temporary fix that is going to be. I guess look that again on February eighth. So hopefully February eighth we don't end up with another shutdown. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully. kind of explain what you what your research. Um, okay, so basically this is nothing new. Um, since they changed the rules, because Congress is in charge of appropriations, which is basically like funding for the government, since they changed the rules in, uh, I want to say like 1976, there's been about 18 government shutdowns. This is just kind of historic because it's the first time that there's been a shutdown where Congress and the president are of the same party. So. That's interesting, but basically the shutdown happens when Congress can't agree, they can't pass a spending bill. And the hold up this time was that Congress couldn't agree to fund a program that started with the Obama administration. It's called DACA. It's, um, I don't remember the, it's like deferred, I should have written it Action down. Action something, yeah. but it's for children of immigrants. Right, yeah. And basically it defers their deportation so that they can get a chance to be an American citizen. And it's not. it doesn't have bipartisan support, so that caused some upset. And it led to a government shutdown that lasted about three days and was resolved Monday, late okay. Monday, with a temporary spending bill that will go until February 8th where they will vote again and the way that they passed it was by basically kind of ignoring DACA and just funding certain essential things. So the way the government shutdown works when it's actually happening is the government is broken into essential and non-essential jobs. So there's not really a conclusive list of what is essential and what is non-essential and you can have an administration like the food and drug administration where different levels are considered essential and different and other levels are non-essential so like an emergency drug thing that they're doing that's considered an emergency effort would be considered essential but then like a day-to-day check that they're just running that would be normal if there wasn't a shutdown is considered non-essential and those non-essential workers are not they don't go to work and they don't get paid they get during a shutdown during a shutdown they don't go to work and they don't get paid and they get a this thing called a furlough which is you're not working but you get retroactive pay for the time that you didn't work and the essential workers not all of them but some of them will also not be paid and they'll get retroactive pay so it kind of stinks if you're an essential worker and you have to work but you don't get your paycheck right away so that kind of stinks. Well, so the, the, the shutdown happened on Friday, didn't it? Wasn't it a Friday? And so then if we're back up by Monday, it probably didn't have a lot of effect, I'm guessing, as far as people working or not working. There probably was some, but mm-hmm. luckily this time around, it sounds like it was corrected before anything I think that's interesting happened. because I was reading a lot of articles and they have different effects on different people. So there might not be like the... For instance, the military is not going to end or something. Yeah, there's certain people that, yeah, they're going to work on a weekend anyway. But it can have a huge effect on our budget, depending on, like, how much retroactive pay you have to pay. Because these oh, people aren't, pay back. Yeah, because yeah, these people aren't working. Hard. They're not getting any work done, but you do have to pay them. Wow. It's not their fault that the government shut down. So that could kind of mess up our budget. And then there's a lot of, I don't know, morale setbacks. Like, you, your job, you just... They tell you don't go to don't work. Don't go to work today. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, who's ultimately responsible when the government shuts down. There's this interesting clip that was 
been surfacing on a lot of news outlets from 2013 where President Trump wasn't president at the time, was commenting to Fox News about, you know, who is responsible when the government shuts down. And of course, at that time, President Obama was in office and President or Trump, um, Mr. Trump at that time said that it's the president that bears the ultimate responsibility because years from now, nobody's going to remember, you know, who was in the House or who was in the Senate. They're going to talk about who was the president at the time of the shutdown, which he made a good point. But of course, now, um, I don't think, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think he's taking responsibility for the shutdown. I think a lot of the blame has been partisan blame, yeah. each side blaming the other side. There's a nice hashtag going around called um, Schumer shutdown. Oh, yeah, they're so blaming they're, Schumer. They're blaming the minority leader in the House. It's okay. I mean, and you know, in, in all fairness, probably a lot of the House is responsible. Maybe everybody in the House or, you know, all of Congress. I mean, it's, you had a point on this where, because I said, well, right. maybe the president is responsible. And you seem to have a strong opinion that the president is not responsible <laughs> for I, a shutdown. And why, why is that? I do, because um, the Constitution actually grants appropriation power to Congress. They have the power of the purse. So they decide where... Who gets funded? How much funding? They decide, like, the money. The president doesn't have any say in that. Mm. So regardless of who the president is, what party party he's from, I mean, you can like him or not like him. He has nothing to do with the budget. That's all Congress. So I don't think... Um, <laughs> and so you wouldn't blame President Trump, but you also wouldn't have blamed President Obama back right. in 2013 when, mm -hmm. when then Mr. Trump was blaming Obama. So that's interesting. But too. I do think he makes a good point that it's easier to remember the president versus the minority or majority leader, or even who's the party in Congress, because that's not something that an, a normal person would know. Yeah, they would remember 25, 50, right. 100 years from now. I mean, we're not talking about like, you know, with reference to Lincoln and Roosevelt. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe a little bit, but that would happen in more scholarly circles, not you yeah. know, just your typical Somebody person. Somebody who's nerdy about <laughs> Are you saying you're a nerd, Katie? I am. So we wanted to talk a little bit about that and hear your feedback. Um, also, we got a comment on the pilot episode that I wanted to talk about a little bit, because in that one, we talked a little bit about um, truth and this concept of truth, which, of course, can always play into our political discussions. Absolutely. Um, and living your truth and, you know, living a, from a place of honesty with yourself. So the comment that we got, I'll just read it. It said, just one question. Do you suppose that when the Hindu master says to the disciple, neti neti, he means not yet your truth? Yoga, as you know, means to take what is divided, one, the manifold being truth, and as a Japanese monk poet put it, in all ten directions of the universe there is one truth. So how, coming out of this tradition, do you make a place from my truth versus your truth? So, I mean, I think, you know, basically what the commenter is saying is that, you know, can there be different levels of truth? And, um... Yeah, truth is a... That's a big, big concept. I and, mean, you know, and if you put this into, um, you know, an actual living example, what happens when people are each living different versions of the truth? truth doesn't match my well, truth. Well, you know, like in Congress, they're, they're living very different truths. But, but when you do discover, like, sort of your innate truth, is that always going to be congruent with other people who have found that one truth? And is it possible for there to be one truth? Interesting questions. Big question. <laughs> I Huge mean, question. The, the, the response I gave to the comment was that, you know, it makes me think more, you know, it raises more questions than answers. But the response I gave it was it reminds me of, you know, this, this proverb where there's the four blind people all holding on to an elephant. And they're each describing the elephant. And the one that's got a hold of the leg is saying... Oh, the elephant is, you know, strong and round like a tree. It's like a tree trunk. And the one that's holding the, you know, the trunk the snout is saying, no, it's like a snake. It's wiggly and um, bendy. And the one that's holding the tail is like, no, he's like a broom. It's wispy and hairy like a, like a broom. And then the question becomes, well, who's got the truth? They're each speaking the truth from their experience, but not, not one of them can see the entire truth. So I think that, you know, for that's a good metaphor for, for us with truth in general that yeah maybe just from our limited human experience it's impossible to ever see the complete truth but we hope that we live our truth from a place that's not an egoic individual truth but more of like an all-inclusive um my truth is okay as long as it doesn't hurt yeah <laughs> your truth type of thing that it's fair to say that my truth doesn't have to match your truth perfectly but it doesn't mean that my truth has to be a to your no, truth. no, and and I think when you're living, you know, more in tune with that, 
flow, that oneness of all life, that your truth would tend to be more inclusive anyway. But still, even if everybody was living from that perspective, wouldn't there still be individual degree of truth? And and because of that, how does that help us just living our day-to-day lives and we're interacting with other people and we're realizing that each of them lives in their own universe where their their truth is their truth and that that's not always going to jive with what other people are thinking and acting. Yeah, and to bring it back to politics, I mean, each of these congressmen has their truth. Exactly. And, and they have different beliefs and different values that do usually oppose each other, but that doesn't mean that their truth is any less of a truth to them just because it opposes another person's truth. And that I think government shutdowns like this wouldn't happen if they kind of did what you said, where they like, I don't know, recognize their own truth, but yeah. then also recognized your truth and tried to work with that. Rather than seeing their truth as the one only truth, and it can't be that I'm holding a different piece of the elephant than you, and that both of our truths are true from our unique perspectives. Interesting stuff. I'd love to hear feedback on that too. And on any of this I stuff. I like that we, proverb. <laughs> we love comments and the comments will help us make future videos. So if you like this, yeah. go ahead, click the like button, subscribe, and leave us comments. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching the Yoga Lawyer video.